Hello all. As I have been previously introduced, my name is Everest Pineal. I have been a student here at Push Ridge Christian Academy since the beginning of seventh grade. And I have enjoyed almost every moment of it. During this time, I have gotten to know and laugh with your children, and I've learned so much. And I don't just mean that I now know the basic rules of algebra, or the parts of a cell, or even that I know more about America than I could have ever dreamed of knowing. I mean the teachers at PRCA have successfully built me up into the person I am today. Parents, I am standing before you today to ensure that your children are learning invaluable life lessons and are building character of the best kind. To thoroughly communicate this to you, I'll tell you my story. My family and I had just arrived in Arizona at what then was a vacation home. At the time, this was promised to be a very temporary arrangement. A month tops. Well, as can be assumed, one thing led to another and we had to stay. In Seattle, school begins in the first week of September. But as you know, in Tucson, school begins in the beginning of August. This came as a huge shock to my family and I. <laughs> and so it became a race to enrollment. We found schools for my younger siblings rain and race pretty quick, but it was extremely taxing to find a school for myself. We had two choices, Coronado K-8 or Push Ridge Christian Academy. Well, it seems like an easy decision, and to my parents it was. They knew that Push Ridge was a much better school, but I had different ideas. I wanted to go to Coronado. My parents tried to convince me otherwise, but they couldn't. I even said to them, I won't do it, you can't make me go. I spat on the very idea. You're probably wondering why I was so against attending Push Ridge. I'll tell you why. It's a Christian school and I wanted nothing to do with it. You see, I knew I was heavily weighed down by my many mistakes and I was scared to come before God with them. And some would say that admitting you have a problem is the first step, but I was still miles away from redemption. Although my parents have always been Christian people, my family seldom stepped foot into a church, and so I knew nothing of divine forgiveness. There was no way that you could make me go to class with a bunch of people who I thought to be saints, because surely my sins were heavier than theirs, and I would be convicted and guilty of it all. So when my parents did enroll me into the school system, I was mad and afraid and narrow-minded, and I spent my first weeks there in quiet remorse and disdain, hating every minute that I was there. But once my initial disgust faded, I began to see. And what I saw was amazing. I saw people left and right making mistakes, just like me. But there was still something different about my peers, and it frustrated me to no end that I couldn't figure out what it was. And so I began to listen. I rarely spoke, but I would carefully analyze every word that reached my ever-curious ears. This went on and on. Words would reach my brain and make no sense at all. And it wasn't until these words reached my heart that I began to truly understand. I'd done it. I'd figured out what was making the people around me so different. But it wasn't a what at all, it was a who. The name Jesus became familiar to me and everything began to change. I started to become a more gentle person and I knew what love was. An encounter with the Lord that I had so long feared has been the most joyful encounter that I've ever made. I am forever changed. Now, you probably needed my little talk just as much as Oro Valley needs another pharmacy. <laughs> But I've told you this so that you can look back with me for a minute. Where would you be without Christ? I think of this often and I fully realize just how ugly my life would be, but what would yours look like? I can tell you this much. You wouldn't be sitting in the church pews in front of me and your children wouldn't be seated behind me. But where would you be? Or perhaps, would you even be here at all? This isn't a question that I can't answer for you. And maybe you can't even answer it for yourself. But I know who can. Ah, yes, I know a father. He is patient, kind, and merciful, yet he disciplines when we need to learn a lesson. And I know a man who is actually more than a man. His undying love cradles those who are in pain, and he weeps for those who suffer. And I know a guide whose discerning wisdom is beyond words. He leads right and provides a new light when we take a wrong turn. But who is he? He is God, and he is good. Alas, it's clear that we know who God is, but I can't help but to wonder what I'm supposed to do now. This, this conflict hits itself almost as a perfect storm. Speaking of storms, I recently th learned what thunder really is, and I would love to tell you. As we know, lightning is a huge flash of natural electricity that is extremely hot. 
When lightning strikes the ground, it burns the air around it, leaving a gap. Thunder is actually the sound of air coming in and filling the gap left behind by the lightning. As Christians, we search for a job. We wish to serve God. And to do this, we need to be the thunder. Okay, in this analogy, the church is the thunder and God is the lightning. God demonstrates his almighty power in a frightening yet beautiful way, and he leaves a gap. It then becomes a task of the church to move in and fill the gap. Once we do this, God will tell us what to do next. This is my challenge to all of us, including myself. In a world that lives in silence, we need to interrupt the silence. This will then capture the world's attention, and then we'll show them what's different about us. In a world that lives in silence, we're going to break the silence and show them who God is. Because after all, there can be no thunder without lightning. Thank you for your time, and God bless.